In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up. He had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during the forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord.
the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts in my turn, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe, according to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to God Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, 
to the close of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. David Delaney. Present. Stephen Arthur Hilgendorf. Present. Samuel Nelson Keyes. Scott Russell Wooten. them to be worthy. After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Then relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these our brothers for the order of the diaconate. My dear candidates for the diaconate, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is a day of Easter joy for the whole church, as four of our own from the ordinariate of the chair of St. Peter are ordained to the diaconate. It's a day of particular joy for me. Today is three months to the day since I broke my leg, and the first time that I will be celebrating Mass publicly at the altar in this cathedral. If I had to choose a day to come back, the ordination of deacons would be it. Today, these men are ordained after the example of Christ for service to the Church. Christ, who came to give his life as a ransom for many. Stephen, Sam, David, Scott, they will be strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift of the sacrament for ministry that is threefold. Filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will assist the bishop and the priests in the service of the Word of God, preaching and teaching the Gospel. Consecrated by the laying on of hands that comes to us from the Apostles, they are bound more closely to the service of the altar and so are commissioned to perform works of charity in the name of the Church. What the Church believes about this sacrament is beautiful and profound. It's also frightening for them. These men will be so conformed to Christ by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the grace of holy orders that we, the members of the Church, can recognize in their life and in their ministry the loving presence, the compassion, and the saving work of the risen Lord himself. Conformity to Christ is the fruit of all of the sacraments in their own way, but that conformity is writ large in the sacrament of holy orders. That the sacraments conform us to Christ and make Christ recognizable in the world is, in a real way, why the angels can say to the apostles on the mountain of the Ascension, 
Why do you stand there gazing up into the sky? The triumphant sun, risen in the power of the Holy Spirit, returns to the embrace of his eternal Father. That is what we celebrate today on this solemnity of the Ascension. But the Ascension does not mean that our Lord simply departs. His life and mission is not locked away in history or in some remote heaven. By the grace he pours out into the church, in baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, holy matrimony, holy orders, penance, and anointing, Christ associates men and women to himself, incorporating them deeper into his body by sacramental grace and giving them all a share in his mission. Some of the earliest examples of Christian architecture trace the image of Christ's ascension along the ceiling of the nave of the church. It's as if the people of God who gathered for the Eucharist were to look up and see a reflection, gathering in his name, doing what he did. Broken and sinful individuals are transformed by the divine life of the Holy Spirit. Christ is made present and active, not despite the disciples who follow him in a particular time and place, but in them and through them, in us and through us. The ascension, therefore, gives shape and orientation to the whole of the Christian life. It is a life lived in conformity to the Son and a movement of return to the Father. And in the ordination of new ministers, we glimpse in a particular way precisely how this works. As you, dear brothers, are to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully now the nature and dignity of this office in the Church. You know from your studies that the word deacon means one who serves. And in the church, this ministry of service is expressed in a threefold diaconia of the sacred liturgy, of the word of God, and of charity. By ordination to the diaconate, you will be made a minister of the altar. And so you, act, you exercise first that diaconia, that service of the sacred liturgy. You prepare the altar for the Eucharistic sacrifice, and you bring the body and blood of the risen Lord to his people. By serving the church in this way and exercising the ministry of deacon during Mass, you truly contribute to the building up of the body of Christ, that is, the church. Your service at the altar also helps other people pray. Because of your care of sacred things, the faithful are more readily able to enter into the rhythm and rituals of worship so that liturgy becomes not something we do as a performance piece, but expresses rather who we are as the church, the bride and body of Christ who worships her Lord in the beauty of holiness. Similarly, your service of the word of God is summarized by the command of the risen Lord given to his disciples on the day of the ascension. Go out into all the world, teach the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ordination authorizes you to preach, to teach, and to evangelize, proclaiming the word not in your own name, but in the name of the church, strengthening and confirming the people of God in their faith. This service is realized in the fact that God speaks his word to us today as he has throughout the centuries of the church's history. He speaks in order to evoke a response of faith. To do this, you need to think and preach from the heart of the church, always grounding that preaching in the teaching of the magisterium. You should be known by your fidelity because you are the servant of the truth, not its innovator. You give voice to the faith once delivered to the saints. You do not invent it. To be at the service of the word, then, is to propose Catholic teaching in its beauty and its breadth for the nourishment of the people of God, and yes, to draw still others 
into fullness of communion with us. Finally, you are ordained to the service of charity, a diaconia in the name of the church to the poor, to the suffering, to the outcast, to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. This, the church's diaconia caritatis, is at the very heart of her identity and her mission. It includes, of course, the more practical ways that we express Christian charity to the poor and to those in need, but it also includes other things for deacons. Administration, the good ordering of things in the parish so that limited resources are put to good and effective use. It includes pastoral availability, simply being present so that the faithful in your community have the opportunity to talk to an ordained person about what is important to them. It includes the missionary impulse at the heart of the church and at the heart of the ordinariate in particular, a willingness to go almost anywhere in North America to serve the needs of the church. This is a particular kind of charity, one which I have seen again and again producing tremendous and unexpected fruit in grace. Dear candidates for ordination, each of you stands today under the great mystery of the Ascension, the return of the Father's love made possible by the obedience of the cross. See your ministry through the lens of this, of this mystery, or as the early Christians did in their art, see the Ascension as a reflection. Through sacred orders, you are given a privileged embrace of the person of Jesus Christ so as to share in his person, in his mission. You did not merit this. You did not warrant this. The Holy Spirit has accomplished this in you. Embrace him. Be embraced by him. Do so, and you will offer to the church and to the world a reflection of the very face of love itself. My dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the Church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the Apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the Gospel and the Church's tradition? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life, and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God, and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these, his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate.
Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministry through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the Church's body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your sons' apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, Look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, 
and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct, so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Read, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach.
I believe in one God. near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. By God, May Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins and to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray thee, the oblations in remembrance of the glorious ascension of thy Son we do offer unto thee, and mercifully grant that we, being delivered from all perils in this life present, may attain in the end unto life everlasting, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after His glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to His disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither might we also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly pray thee through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. And we ask that thou accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. We offer them unto thee first for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou vouchsafe to keep her in peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with thy servant Francis, our Pope, with me, thine unworthy servant, and all the faithful guardians of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids. And all who here around us stand, whose faith is known unto thee, and their steadfastness manifest, on whose behalf we offer unto thee, or who themselves offer unto thee this sacrifice of praise, for themselves and for all who are theirs, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their health and well-being, and to offer their prayers unto thee, the eternal God, the living and the true. United in one communion, we celebrate the most sacred day, whereon our Lord, thy only begotten Son, set at the right hand of thy glory, the substance of our frailty united to himself. We venerate, moreover, the memory first of the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, 
mother of the same, our God and Lord Jesus Christ, of blessed Joseph, her spouse, as also thy blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Zixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and of all thy saints. Grant that by their merits and prayers we may in all things be defended with the help of thy protection. This, then, is the oblation of our service and that of thine whole family, which we also offer for thy servants whom thou hast kindly advanced to the order of the diaconate. We beg thee graciously to accept it, Lord, and in thy mercy to preserve in them the gifts thou hast given, that what they have received from thy divine goodness they may fulfill by the aid of thy divine grace. Vow, safe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes lifted up to heaven, to thee, O God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Wherefore, O Lord, we, thy servants and thy holy people also, remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, as also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven, do offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty, the pure victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, vouchsafe to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance and to accept them, even as thou didst vouchsafe to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel, the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim, which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high in the sight of thy divine majesty, that all we who at this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us sealed with the seal of faith and who sleep the sleep of peace. Them, O Lord, and all the brethren,
trust in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing, of light, and of peace. To us sinners also, thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part in fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee admit us, not weighing our merit, but granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thus sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. By whom and with whom and in whom, to thee, O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. from all evils, past, present, and to come, and at the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and with Andrew and all the saints, favorably grant peace in our days, that by the help of thine availing mercy, we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Lord, I Jesus Christ, who says to thine apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant to her peace and unity according to thy will, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia.
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so treat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. And our souls wash through his most precious blood. That we may the Lord God again, and he in us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporated in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through the hope of Thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we want thee to cease to your love and power, so as to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who will be in the Holy Spirit, the all honor and glory, the world of thy Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, almighty and merciful God, that we who have outwardly received these holy mysteries may inwardly be made partakers of the benefit of the same through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who hath called you to the service of mankind in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially for the afflicted and the poor. entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ, help you as you live according to his word, to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. May he who hath appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.